Hey guys, how are you all doing today? We're gonna check a topic which um, some of you might not find uh, as interesting as other topics such as attack or tactics but it is extremely important because uh, in chess defending is you know as important or even more important than attacking because you know uh, it is inevitable that we are gonna have uh, bad positions in some of our games this happens to every player so we need to know how to defend accurately so the the main principles that we'll use today are that uh, first of all you know first things first you need to understand what your opponent threat is you know when you're being attacked you need to know what your opponent wants to to do so how he wants to win the game once you understand that when you're being attacked first of all and this is extremely important you need to check if there's any possibility to counter attack so if, if, if there's any 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 counterplay that you have so um, and only after you, if you don't find any any counterplay only then you can check you know uh, defensive moves and this is very important because um, our instinct when we are under attack uh, is to defend so and this is uh, an instinct that we have probably we were born with that but it's, 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 it's basically wrong when you play chess it is it's not a, a good instinct for chess okay so we're gonna check some positions we're gonna start with the easier positions and then we're gonna check uh, more complicated positions and the first position is a game between uh, Fan Belly and Peter Leko so Fan Belly just played the move f5 and this is a very aggressive move he's attacking e6 g6 trying to open lines maybe even f6 is an idea to to lock the bishop on h8 so i would like to ask you to pause the video and check uh, all the possible moves that you uh, moves and ideas that you can play as black so the first uh, move uh, that most of us uh, my play or might think about is to take on a five right because this pawn is, is aggressive so we want to pick it up but after he takes and after the knight moves let's say to a move like knight g5 uh, knight g7 is even even worse because it's just very defensive knight g5 after white takes then we see that uh, taking on on f5 basically opened uh, the e file and also gave the the knight a very nice square so we see that here um, white's attacks is even you know gaining momentum so taking on f5 doesn't look like a good idea so if we check about ideas uh, of moving the knight which is again normal reaction so uh, white wants to pick up knight so if we check a move like knight g7 then white can play a move like g4 uh, you know just building up the attack and this knight is really not having good squares so we see that this knight g7 doesn't look very convincing okay other alternatives are to move the knight to g5 and i think that this is a much more interesting alternative because uh, black is counter attacking and even if uh, so if white takes and then if white takes on on g6 we see that black is getting a lot of counterplay. Uh, maybe his pawn structure is not great, but again, at least he's getting a lot, of, a lot of counterplay. He has the the e5 square, so this is quite an interesting alternative, knight g5. And then there's another, there's there's uh, one last uh, uh, move with the knight. I mean, knight f4 is a move, but just blunders a, a piece after g takes but here knight d4 is kind of a computer move but it's quite interesting the point is that after taking on d4 bishop takes king g2 then g5 gets the piece back uh, maybe uh, um, here let go what might was afraid that after taking on h4 this will open the g file and last but not least is the move that uh, leko played which is g5 Okay, so just kind of ignoring the threat 
but counter attacking okay so and this is actually a very interesting move and one of the things that I want to highlight about counter attacking is that it has a lot of uh, practical value because you uh, put problems on you put pressure on your opponent whereas when you defend you are just following what he wants to do so psychologically it has a, a, a lot of value so and after g5 uh, takes on, e, on e6 take on h4 the game continues queen g4 bishop g7 and after taking on h4 um, here black played the interesting move c4 and here white continued with uh, c4 the idea is to do not give a square for the knight c4 and here white play king, king g2 well if, if white can gain a pawn here but after uh, taking on f7 we see that black is getting really active and um, so this is also another important point uh, black even doesn't care about material but he wants to to get active you know to get to get counterplay instead of defending passively and after king g2 then black played uh, f takes c6 and the the position is kind of balanced so it's complicated it's a complicated position because uh, uh, white has a better pawn structure uh, but white has very active pieces okay so uh, also black has uh, the rook on open files so the position is uh, between balanced and slightly better for white but uh, uh, it is uh, what I want to highlight is the the move g5 which was a very very interesting move because uh, at the end of this variation uh, it is black who got more active instead of white okay so we're gonna check another position this is the game between uh, Charbonneau and Anand played in 2006 and here Anand played the extremely aggressive move g3 just uh, so the position is quite complicated so we need to first of all understand uh, what threats Anand has in the position so for this we can imagine that we play a move like a5 which doesn't change the position that much and we can see that here uh, black might even try to take on e4 is an idea but also taking on h2 is probably the main idea opening files opening the g file um, so if we try to neutralize that uh, idea with h3 then here the move knight takes e4 attacking the queen so if we take bishop takes we see that uh, black is getting extremely active since if we take the knight then rook h3 is very strong and after a move like uh, king g1 uh, well here uh, black can start attacking strongly even sacrificing the rook so we see that the position is quite uh, unpleasant for white so the main point is here that it is kind of inevitable to uh, we cannot avoid the black's threat so then we, actually the move played by by white i think that in a way it was forced by black because white cannot uh, neutralize the threat so that's what that's why white uh, charmono played the the very good move f takes e5 okay because uh white is counter-attacking taking material uh, but also very important is eliminating this very important knight as we will see in the game continuation because here after taking on e4 uh, well if another alternative was to take on h2 but even here a move like bishop f3 is good and the point is that the knight is not on e5 on e anymore so moves like knight takes e5 are not possible so here Bla uh, black took on e4 and after taking on e4 here came the very strong uh, defensive move it's a very good move because it uses a lot of defensive principles is the move bishop to d3 okay again uh, the move h3 is not possible because uh, rook takes is very strong and after bishop uh, bishop d3 so we see that white is again counter attacking because we want to take on e4 but also we are uh, simplifying the position we're exchanging pieces which is as you might know very good when, when you defend to simplify the position because if the bishop moves somewhere then 
bishop takes d6 is, is a threat so that's why bishop d6 is a very strong move but again it was possible thanks to the fact that knight takes e5 is not possible in this position because the knight was taken so after bishop d d3 um, and then try some desperado moves like bishop takes g2 uh, basically he's lost here and after taking on on h2 taking the rook knight g3 well the other moves were possible this is kind of nice to give back some material which is another defensive idea why this rook up and after rook g4 again another very nice counter attacking move which is bishop e7 okay so again if we are attacked uh, we don't need to think about uh, only about moving the queen here this is uh, probably our first instinct but again here counter attacking is actually very good it also as, as, as i said is just a very uh, it has practical value because we put problems on our opponent and here uh, anand resigned uh, due to the fact that after taking only four bishop f6 queen g7 don't take the queen but just rook b8 is just a forced checkmate and the next example this is extremely instructive i really like it because it is using this principle you know taking this idea to the extreme to the limit and here it is uh, black to play so um, we see that the rook is being attacked probably many of you might think okay let's exchange rooks yeah, this is an active rook on on a5 but again uh, sorry the game is played between Bogolyugov and Aljochin in 1922 here uh, Aljochin played the move before again attacking counter attacking and after rook takes a8 uh, many of you will think about okay let's take the rook but no Aljochin again counter attacking taking on c3 white has to take the the queen otherwise he will be down a lot of material and here i would like to ask you to pause the video and tell me what you will play uh, as black again using this principle So here, you know, the, the first instinct, the first reaction might be to just take the rook. Uh, the rook is being attacked. Why not? But here after rook takes, knight takes. Black is a pawn down. He has compensation because he has much better pieces. Look at this bishop on h1. But there's a much stronger move, which is the move c2. So it's quite a, quite a beautiful move. Just given a rook with, even with check. But after king h7, knight f2, c1 queens, uh, we see that uh, knight a2, and again an attacking move. We see that uh, black has a queen for two rooks. But the main point is that uh, the coordination that black has is much better. Uh, white has very passive pieces, so uh, black won pretty quickly. So after bishop b5, is kind of forced to give the the exchange and the game just ended very quickly so here black has decisive material advantage and here white is kind of trying to create a fortress but here queen e2 is quite a aesthetic move and after rook takes takes the the pawn ending is just winning so here uh, bogal you have resigned so the last position, by the way, uh, you know these principles, we can apply it to any stage of the game. The principle of trust, w when being attacked, find counter-attacking moves first. And here uh, we have the game between Rublevsky and Kasparov. It is an ending, a rook ending. Uh, you know, they said that rook endings are all drawn. It might be true or close to true, but uh, you know, rook endings are extremely complicated sometimes. Maybe even if you have a draw, it's extremely hard to find it. So here, um, white uh, white is a pawn down, but uh, we see that the extra pawn is, has very little value. It's double pawn, but white is uh, way more active with the rook attacking pawns. The king is, you know, uh, ready to get very active. So white has a, a a better position, much better from a practical point of view. And here Kasparov, 
so the pawn on d5 is being attacked so here he played the defensive move okay rook a5 which actually is um, is uh, not the best move and here so this is a very complicated position and here the move rook a1 was was actually the the best alternative uh, the point is to give the pawn but to find uh, counterplay so after rook e1 uh, if king d4 or king e4 then rook e2 blacks uh, gets very active attacking the pawns on the second rank and after king f2 uh, rook d1 and yeah, again if I uh, move like king e2 then we have rook d1 and after rook d4 king f6 we see that uh, black gave the pawn back but now is uh, black is the one who is active you see that uh, the king might come to e5 and if rook takes e4 or rook takes e4 than rook d2 just simplifies the position white still has a, a better position maybe but the position is much easier to play than what kasparov did because after rook a5 then um, rubleski played h4 uh, which is a great move because it's kind of you know uh, limiting even black's options even more because uh, now all of black's pieces are defending and um, here Kasparov played the active g5 so here he started playing actively you know counter-attacking one move to later or uh, alternatively a move like rook b5 g3 rook a5 then we see that white starts getting active and is again having a much better position and after g5, taking on h5, king e7, rook c6, here Kasparov played the same idea, but, uh, you know, we see that we, we being a pawn down, I'm giving a pawn, so instead of uh, uh, being a pawn up, and we see that this pawn is going to be very, very strong, so here king d4, uh, rook d1, king d5, e3, rook e6, king d7, rook takes, rook takes king c4 rook takes a rook e5 and here white has a a better ending so this ending is um, uh, quite complicated to analyze whether it's a win or, or, or a loss um, g6 was an interest, interesting move here uh, because in the game what happened we see that uh, white managed to to put a pawn on g6 and then go after this pawn and here Rubleski game uh, won the game afterwards So we see that white here has uh, two ideas. One is to go after this pawn, and the other idea is to push the, the C pawn. And in this position, after rook f5, uh, black gave this pawn. Again, instead of defending, counter attacking, we see that it's still applied here. And after rook f5, rook f7, uh, this g pawn will fall and this white's g pawn will will win so here kasparov resigned so i hope that you guys like these uh, principles uh, i hope that you can apply th these to your games if you have games to that you want to share defensive games uh, your games or someone's other's games feel free to do it uh, so just to summarize all the main points of this uh, lesson uh, first of all, you need to understand, you know, uh, w the idea of your opponent when you are being attacked. And uh, so when being attacked, uh, first of all, remember to check the counter-attack. Counter-attacking moves that you, ideas or moves that you might have, okay? Don't go for the, when you're being attacked, don't go for the defensive uh, straight away. And this is very important because, as I told you, you know, uh, our instincts sometimes might tell you to defend, but this, you know, the idea of your opponent might be just a bluff, so there's no need to defend right after he attacks you. And only if you don't find any any idea to counter attack, then you might uh, start uh, analyzing defensive ideas. Okay. So if you wanna um, deepen your knowledge on on this topic. I suggest that you study the course Defending Champion. Uh, the course, you know, it is, it is uh, much has much more information than one I can give in 20 minutes. It talks about uh, the the techniques, all the techniques, 
on the three main methods that you need to use whenever you need to defend in any stage of the game. Remember that these ideas, the one that I told you, you can use them in the opening, in the middle of the game, in the ending. So they are quite uh, general principles that they are very, very good to apply. They are very useful, and they will really simplify, you know, your your thought process when you need to find defensive ideas. So I'll talk to you next time, guys. Have a nice day. Bye bye.